Okay, hello. Uh, I'm Dario from Moon Wallet. Uh, we just released a, a Lightning Wallet, mobile wallet, a couple of days ago. Uh, and I'm going to be talking a, a little bit about how do we go to a full on chain wallet uh, to an, a wallet that can interact both uh, with on chain transactions and off chain transactions seamlessly, uh, which we think is the future for Lightning wallets. Okay, so first of all, um, in the last six months or so, uh, we saw a lot of uh, different Lightning wallets that uh, use custodial payments uh, in Lightning as a really nice hack to get to a really interesting um, UX uh, from the user perspective, uh, like having seamless payments uh, with, without having to deal with channel management. Um, but we really think that um, non-custodial is really important. Uh, and as we go forward, it's really important to, that Lightning can work in a non-custodial manner without having to trust third parties. Uh, and so at the, at the end of the day, Lightning is, is for the people that uh, are, aren't transacting with a lot of money in a day-to-day -day basis. And we think that uh, Lightning uh, should be able to be used uh, from uh, uh, sh should be able to be used uh, for, a, for a user that has no experience in Lightning that doesn't know what a payment channel is without having to understand channel management and all that stuff. Okay, so how do we get there? How do we get to a seamless Lightning experience? Uh, without uh, having to do any channel management. Um, our three main uh, UX uh, challenges uh, we think are having a unified balance uh, where you can access all your Bitcoins regardless of whether you want to make an on-chain payment or an off-chain payment. Then we think that channel management should be done completely automatically uh, and the user shouldn't even know what a payment channel is. And finally, um, it's really important to have like automatic routing um, for the user and letting the, the wallet choose whether an on-chain transaction or an off-chain transaction is the, best, uh, is the best option for every payment the user wants to make. Uh, users shouldn't be uh, choosing uh, whether to make an on-chain transaction or an off-chain transaction because most of the times they, they don't even have the information to make that decision. Okay. Um, so, uh, first of all, like, uh, we want to, to be able to have a unified um, Bitcoin balance, regardless of whether the, the Bitcoins are committed to a channel or are on chain or are committed to multiple channels. Uh, so how do we do that? If we, if we have uh, all our Bitcoins committed to a single channel, then to make an off-chain payment is really easy. We just make a regular Lightning payment and everything should work. Uh, Bitcoin uh, Lightning is built specifically for that. Um, and it's working today. But how do we do a non-chain payment? If we have everything committed to, to a single payment channel, making an off-chain, uh, an on-chain payment today is really difficult. And the way to do that is using splice outs. Uh, splice outs don't exist today in the protocol, uh, but the, the idea is that we can close a channel, make an on-chain tr transaction, and reopen a channel uh, with, the, with the remaining balance, all in a single transaction. Um, today, there, there's uh, different... Uh, solutions for doing this since we don't have splice outs. Uh, many wallets are doing uh, submarine swaps uh, to do this like Breeze Wallet and the new wallet announced by Async uh, yesterday. Uh, but going forward we will probably want to do splice outs because they are more efficient and a little bit more trustless. Okay, so um, if we have uh, the Bitcoins committed to multiple channels. It's a little bit more difficult than having a single, uh, all, all the money in a single channel. And what we want to do is uh, for off-chain payments, 
we need uh, atomic multipath payments because our money is distributed into multiple channels and we might want to use it, uh, all the money at once, uh, for a single payment. Uh, so we need AMP. AMP is, uh, I hope, coming in the next months or so. Uh, so we will soon be able to do this. Um, and what if we want to do an on-chain payment uh, with our money distributed in multiple channels? Um, then what, what we need is a splice out, but a little version of a splice out. Like we need a cut through splice out, which is like several splice outs all merged together, uh, which I think will eventually get in the protocol. And finally, if we have our funds on chain uh, and we want to do an off chain payment, then we, we can do that with a submarine swap. Uh, it works today. Um, and if we want to do an on-chain payment, then we, we can just do a, an on-chain transaction. And in this way, regardless of whether we have our money uh, committed to one channel, to multiple channels, on-chain, or a mix of that, we should be able to make both on-chain and off-chain transactions at any time. Okay, so how do we do automatic channel management? Um, one of the key insights here is that off-chain Bitcoins are more liquid than on-chain Bitcoins. Like, if we have all our Bitcoins committed to, to payment channels, we can at any point do an on-chain transaction, uh, doing a splice out or something like that. Um, and with a single transaction, uh, send money to someone on-chain. And if we have uh, the money committed to payment channels, we can also at any point do an off-chain transaction and it will just work. So uh, one of the co co corollaries of this fact is that we want to aim as a wallet to have all the money committed to channels all the time for a hot wallet. So uh, there are several implications to doing this. Uh, the first of all is that we have to be really picky uh, in how we choose the peers we connect to. Uh, these peers ha have to need to have a lot of connections to other peers, both with inbound capacity and outbound capacity. Uh, and these peers need to have great uptime uh, and also really good reputation, right? We don't want to uh, be having like um, uh, channel closes and that kind of stuff. Uh, so in mobile wallets, we will need to be really picky as to how we choose to which peers we connect to. Uh, finally, uh, a couple other um, interesting things that arise from this fact is that the UTXO selection problem that uh, on-chain wallets used to have now transforms into the channel selection problem. If we have multiple channels open, we have to choose which channel we will use uh, for sending a payment or, or even which uh, like multiple channels we will use with AMP. Uh, and so, while doing this, the, pro the problem is a little bit more interesting than the UTXO selection problem because um, we can be, uh, as we make a payment, we can use that uh, to do some kind of rebalancing. Uh, and so, uh, the, the UTXO selection problem is, is reflected uh, on, on channels. Also, um, for on-chain wallets, we had the UTXO consolidation problem, and uh, sometimes we wanted to consolidate all our UTXOs in order to reduce fees, uh, to take advantage of low fees uh, on-chain. Uh, now we have the same uh, problem for, for channels, where we might want to do a channel consolidation. And this is even more important than, than in on-chain transactions because uh, channels have a little bit more leakage of funds. We have reserve capacities uh, and, a, and a little bit other um, uh, amounts of money com committed uh, to different purposes in a channel. So having as, as little channels as possible is desirable from a user's st standpoint. Okay, um, finally, so uh, how, how does a wallet uh, choose whether uh, the, uh, 
what's best for the user, right? Whether the user should make an on-chain payment or an off-chain payment. Um, on the one hand, we have to analyze uh, the availability of routes in the Lightning Network. Uh, it, even if uh, a Lightning payment might be uh, cheaper to make than an on-chain payment, uh, we might not have routes, and then we, we want to go on-chain uh, anyways. And besides that, there will always be uh, cases in which we prefer on-chain payments, mainly because of the fact that um, on-chain payments are uh, constant with respect to the payment amount, uh, whereas Lightning payments scale linearly with the amount of the payment. So at some point, uh, if we want to send uh, big enough payments, we will prefer uh, on-chain payments to do this. Bien, and how does the, um, the sender choose how to send, send that payment? Uh, what, what I just described is what the, what the receiver might do uh, in order to um, choose whether it, she prefers to receive a, an on-chain payment or a lightning payment, but there are some possibilities for the sender to, for the receiver to give both options to the, to the sender and the sender to choose what payment method it prefers to use. Um, today, uh, there, there's, uh, two different methods. Uh, we can use Bitcoin, regular Bitcoin URIs where there's a little known, um, extension where you can include an invoice, uh, in a BIP21, uh, URI, and the sender can choose whether to use the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin address or the invoice. And this is great because it's, it's retro compatible. Uh, a Bitcoin only wallet, like an on-chain only wallet, will, will just see the on-chain address and will use that. Uh, whereas a, a Lightning wallet uh, might see the invoice and you use the invoice to make a Lightning payment. And as we go forward and more wallets support uh, Lightning Network, uh, we also have the possibility of including a fallback on-chain address uh, in, in the, inside the Lightning invoice, uh, but that's not uh, retro-compatible, right? So uh, this is only useful for wallets that already support Lightning. Okay, so how, how can we get uh, here today? Uh, so uh, I talked about splice outs, about AMP. There's a lot of new technology needed for m making this work. Um, but we already have production ready uh, on-chain stuff uh, in Bitcoin wallets. Like uh, on-chain wallets are, are already working and are working well uh, and have been battle tested for several years now. So, um, the way we are taking in Moon Wallet right now is uh, going with submarine swaps. Submarine swaps uh, for the wallets are regular uh, on-chain transactions and the server takes care of transforming that into a Lightning payment. And we can run uh, Lightning nodes in the servers, which is easier and has less problems today due to reliability. Um, and the idea is to, little by little, um, transform these submarine swaps, which in the end are just HTLCs, into full-blown payment channels. Uh, we are thinking of submarine swaps as mini payment channels, and as we take them off the chain and, and start adding more capabilities like uh, collaborative closing and, and all the, the good stuff that uh, Lightning payment channels have, we can get to um, full-blown payment channels without compromising at any point either the UX for the user or the non-custodial aspect of the wallet. That's it, thank you. So there are, there are a couple of minutes left for Q&A, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass this mic and feel free to ask any questions. I used your wallet yesterday on the bit refill and it was a, it was a blaze. One minute for a transaction and I didn't have to answer if it was on chain, off chain, whatever. So I guess it was off chain because it was quick. Um, could you elaborate on what really happens when the key recovery 
is used by me. So it's non-custodial, but I guess without your service being online, I don't have something to recover from because my funds might be or should be in a single uh, single channel the moment I enter the 42 recovery words. Uh, yeah, so um, you, uh, for, for, your, for your wallet, like everything is on-chain because the, the first hop of the submarine swap is an on-chain payment. Uh, which has an HTLC as a script. Uh, so with your keys, uh, uh, I'm sorry, with your um, private keys, you can scan the chain, find those transactions, wait for the HTLC to expire, and then reclaim that money. Uh, so everything should be non-custodial, and you should be able to recover everything with just the private keys. When you do the submarine swap, um, do you wait for confirmations or do you do that as like a zero comp style? Um, just sort of like managing the risk for you with the UX for the user of feeling like it's instant payment. Yeah, so right now we are accepting zero conf uh, submarine swaps, but we are doing a, a, a risk analysis and if within the transaction risky, we will wait for one confirmation. But we are assuming the risk, the user uh, doesn't incur in any risk. Any more questions? Um, if your channel is, um, is empty, so to speak, um, what options do you support to um, top up? Uh, yeah, so right now uh, the, the wallet doesn't have channels. Uh, it, it, just got, it just makes summer and swaps. Uh, we do allow, uh, but we do allow to make uh, lightning payments uh, regardless of whether the destination has a, a inbound capacity or not. If the destination doesn't have inbound capacity, then we will open a channel uh, on the spot and make the lightning payment. Uh, it might take a little bit uh, of extra time because of uh, the, the time it takes to open a channel. Uh, but yeah, we can make a payment even without uh, available routes. Any more questions? All right, let's please give a hand for Dario. Thank you.